I wash my hands after I use the toilet. I wash my hands after I touch the animal. I also wash my hands after I cough. I wash my hands before every meal. I wash my hands after I sneeze. Hand washing reduces the spread of germs and diseases. Wash your hands before you eat or touch food. Together, let's make hand washing a habit. This program is brought to you by Colgate. Brush twice a day for strong, healthy teeth. Good evening. Welcome to Simpson at 8. We continue to face unprecedented economic and social challenges as the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic continues to affect industries and businesses, leading to job losses, reduced hours, closures and economic hardship. Our economy, like many around the world, is reeling. What needs to be done to get us back on track? Joining me this evening to discuss the situation and the way forward is former Reserve Bank Governor and Unity Fiji Party Leader, Savanada Narumbe. Mr. Narumbe, thank you for joining me on Simpson today. Thank you. All right. Uh, how do you see the, the state of the economy, the Fijian economy at the, at, at the moment? Uh, well, the, the, there's neg but the positives and the negatives. Yes, yes. Uh, I guess the, uh, the negatives far outweigh the positives at this stage. We all know how worse it is, but uh, we don't have the numbers. And I think we should look at the numbers. When we look at the numbers, well, the ones that I have been looking at, it's quite scary. Mm. And what makes it more of a concern is that we don't know the end of this crisis. So we need to collect the numbers. We need to look at them and seriously then uh, devise what we think is the best package to address this. And then uh, whether we'll be able to, to project how, how, how we're going to do things. Eh? Absolutely. So we, we, we can see some numbers in terms of uh, the FNPF assistance, for instance, right. as an example, 87,000, right. if, uh, if I'm correct. And obviously the job losses in the tourism industry. Right. We haven't got the exact numbers. I think government is yes. undertaking a survey right now yes. uh, on the matter. But uh, job losses, businesses closing down, tourism, which is our largest revenue earner, it's crippled and broken. This is unlike anything we've ever seen in our lifetime, haven't we? I've been stressing that, that this is something that we haven't seen before and perhaps we'll never see in our lifetime. How big this impact is on everyday lives is phenomenal. Uh, and I think if you step back and see where are the sectors that these things are, are more affected than others, you mentioned tourism. That's totally devastated mm. and it's our main uh, main industry. I estimate that tourism picks up to about uh, nearly 50 percent of our economy. If you count everyone that is involved in the industry, it was that's more, a big it was, one. It was the golden goose of, yes. of the economy. And that's down. That's gone. Yep. Uh, for now. For now. And uh, so what has government done right? What could it have done better? Yeah, I, I think what it needs to do is to give us uh, a clear view of what it has to save us from uh, this crisis. It hasn't done that? I don't think so. What we have seen is pieces of it coming out here, coming out there, coming out here. If you look at the, the budgets or the, or the, the plan of uh, other countries, like New Zealand came out a few days ago, very clear, absolutely clear what it needs to do. This government hasn't done this. We haven't, so we haven't got there yet. But, oh, but uh, uh, I'd like to take the point of what we have. We do not know what we have yet. Because a lot of people, I think including you and many of the opposition leaders, mm. said we don't have money. Yep. Uh, government, hasn't, government says we do have the resources. Yeah, I think uh, they the figures say that. otherwise. Mm. I mean, seriously, I mean, we look at the figures and the government is going to collect only 25% of its taxes expected for this year. Where's the 75% gone? That's a big hole for government to fill. And of course, the taxes that are coming in because of the low economy, it's, it's, it's not going to, it, to be sufficient it's, for what we need. You're right. It's, um, as I said, tourism, you know, all the departure taxes, right. all the ECAL, the, the bed tax, all. 
the key really is in our response, isn't it? In yes. how we respond, because some of these things are out of our out of our hands in terms of the the stop travel, when yes. travel will resume, and all. But the key now is on our, our response uh, domestically. Yes, yes. Uh, I mean, our responses are dictated by the situation we faced before the crisis happened. So we'll need to take that into account and determine from that particular starting point, what can we do given the resources that we have? So what should be done? Yeah, well, I've put out some views on, on the stages that we need to, to be considering. Mm -hmm. We can't do everything at the, the same time, obviously. We can't uh, do a lot of things that other countries do because our debt situation is absolutely high. Mm. So what can we do? I say, I've, I've suggested that we take slices of the program. You decide what to do immediately. And in my, my thinking, you need to take care of the people. And you also uh, need to reduce common expenses. OK, so that's two. We will we'll delve, we'll delve uh, more into that. So you, sure. you, uh, let me, I'll go through some one of your recent statements, I think, a few days mm -hmm. ago. You called on government to do more immediately to cushion the economic impacts and save jobs. How can they do that? Yeah, uh, I guess saving jobs will be very tough at this time. So that's why I'm suggesting because do something else. else. Mm. Yeah, business is down, demand is down, you know, tourists are not coming, so you can't do much on that. So what do you do to people that are affected? We heard recently the, the case of Fiji Airways losing 800 mm. uh, workers. So my my suggestion to, to government is, is that you fill in that gaps that the incomes that are not there right now. So that's the first thing that I suggest we do. So fill in the income, what exactly does that mean? Yeah, give out the, the money to the people and the small businesses. So what, grants? Uh, I'm loans? suggesting basically grants. Grants. Basically grants. Uh, and uh, so, so you've stated, uh, okay, let, let me just, uh, you stated government is not being decisive and proactive. Uh, mm -hmm. You've mentioned that. Um, and the, you ask, you're saying that they have to do now to, to, to give in grants. Uh, where would they get the money from? Well, this is, uh, I think, is the, the issue we need to really be smart about. Mm. We don't have much money. So where would that come from? And that brings me to the point that government must start to adjust its expenses now. It must cut out wasteful expenses. It must cut out those uh, projects that maybe haven't started. It needs to do a lot of things, and I've suggested that in my list. Okay. And the second is that, uh, well, not many institutions have money right now. The only institutions that have money is the Reserve Bank of India. And I'm suggesting half of that comes from borrowing from the Reserve Bank of Fiji. Uh, and the Fiji National Provident Fund. Because what I'm saying, um, you've stated, mm -hmm. and, and let me read this, to, you've proposed a $1 billion cash injection to boost right. the Fiji economy, uh, saying that's the kind of decisive action that the country needs uh, right now. Mm. $1 billion, where did, where did you get that figure from? Or how did you come up with the if, figure? If you look at uh, that's almost a quarter or a third of our national budget right there. Yeah, if you look at uh, the amount of income we have lost, start from there. We have a GDP, gross domestic product, that is declining in my view by 10%. You know? And then you calculate from there what I call the gross national income, which I think we have lost over $2 billion in income. So I'm suggesting about a third of that, or close to half of that be reinstated to the people, to give them the amount of money they need for essential expenditures and, of course, take care of their, their daily living. So, you're, so you believe that the billion dollars is available here locally? Oh, yes. Otherwise, I wouldn't have suggested it. As I said, half of it should come from the Reserve Bank and half of it from the savings of government. Uh, how, uh, how will the Reserve Bank uh, get that? Sorry, uh, let me just ask. Yeah, normally the Reserve Bank can lend money to governments. And that's basically what it does. And they have that money? The Reserve Bank can print money. That's what I'm suggesting. So it you're prints money. To print the money. Exactly. Yeah. Print uh, up to that amount that you're asking for to be able to. 
Yes, yes. Uh, the Reserve Bank can, can print as much money as it can. That also lead, hmm? leads to complications. Uh, of course. Yeah. That is not, uh, doesn't, it's not free. It has some implications on inflation and balance of payments, foreign reserves. But I'm saying we are in an unprecedented time and it needs to have a kind of a bold action some which we can manage. Solutions to we can manage inflation, we can manage foreign reserves. So that's one aspect of financing, that one billion. All right. Uh, interesting discussion, interesting <laughs> solutions. We'll delve further into that. Uh, you're watching Simpson and we're with uh, Unity Fiji Party leader Savannah Narumbe. We'll be back after the break. This program is brought to you by Colgate. Brush twice a day for strong, healthy teeth. Bula, I'm Charlie from the Child Helpline. Life can be pretty fun for us kids, but sometimes it's not fun. And things can happen to us that make us feel scared and alone. At the Child Helpline, there's someone waiting by the phone right now. Yep, right now, for you to talk to. So give us a call. We're here to help. At the Child Helpline, we're here for you. No matter what you're going through, anytime, day or night, call 1325. That's 1325. This program is brought to you by Colgate. Brush twice a day for strong, healthy teeth. Welcome back. You're watching Simpson at 8. Uh, I'm with uh, Savannah Narumbe, Unity Fiji Party leader. Uh, we'll, we'll come back to the discussion mm -hmm. that we were having earlier before the break about mm. uh, where, where do we find the money. I just want to go back and touch on your statement about the government not being decisive and proactive. Because mm -hmm. uh, government would argue that they are, I would say, doing the best given the circumstances and the resources they have. I mean, so support mm -hmm. access to FNPA, people's FNPA funds, initiatives for those uh, who are unemployed to start their business. They are now mm -hmm. seeking a 455 million loan mm -hmm. uh, to just keep Fiji away alive. That's almost mm -hmm. half of the one billion that, uh, that you asked for. Mm. They're saying more will be uh, announced in the coming budget. So when you say that they are not being decisive and proactive, the response could be we are, that they are being more responsible in the way they are handling the crisis. Yeah. Your response? Uh, I think you have to be quite uh, decisive in coming early. Decisive in uh, charting out the whole program. That's what I mean by decisive. And uh, I haven't seen much of that. I've seen uh, uh, programs that are suggested here, then you wait for a while, and then comes to the, the next component. So we need to stretch out something and do it early. We, we're nearly, what, four months down the line. Mm. And and we haven't got a full program, I'm sorry to say. Uh, you, you said, uh, and these are words, the government is drip feeding its assistance program with uh, inadequate funding and failing to properly target those in need of assistance. Explain. Yeah. What I did, we have companies on one side that are obviously in, in difficulties, and then we have people that have lost their jobs. My calculation of people that have lost my job will be close to 100,000 workers. These incomes have just disappeared. It is so what do they do with that? It is an unprecedented the, situation. So, you know, one could see from the government side that, you know, they're feeling their way around, trying to find what, what the solution will be rather than moving quickly on something that could backfire spectacularly into the future. Yeah, we, we need to be smart. We need to understand the ramifications of each action. But we cannot be feeling our way around at this time. Uh, if uh, we need some advice or some uh, suggestions from uh, others that may have it, why not? But what I see is government is just telling the workers, well, you have lost your job, go and get your money from FNPF. That's the only solution that I hear on supporting the families. That's not enough. It's not sufficient. And apart from the agriculture assistance, uh, seeds and... Yeah, those, and those are bills. separate. But yeah. Those are ones that gives directly to the people right. cash. And that's only FNPF. 
And that to me is both insufficient and inappropriate. And would you say the uncertainty from government is breeding further uncertainty? It is, from the, from the because people. they don't know what is going to happen. Uh, you've also stated, I understand the financial bind that you understand the financial bind that government faces at this crisis, but uh, that they find a way if they're innovative enough, uh, they need to act smart, that milking of the FNPF is not the right answer, and the cost of not doing anything far outweighs the cost mm. uh, of doing things right now. So, innovations, let's talk innovations. Mm -hmm. What are some of the innovations you could, you could think of? Well, we just talked about it. Mm. Uh, a few minutes earlier, that you need to find uh, avenues to where you get your money from. Uh, and I want to see government seriously looking at its expenses and saying, well, we cut this, we don't need this, let's defer this, uh, to, to cover the shortfall in their revenue alone. What would be some, of the, tremendous what would be some of the expenses you would look at straight away? Well, I have put my list down yeah. in, uh, in what I have put out to the public. One of them, of course, is uh, vehicles. We still see a lot of vehicles on the road. And I don't see why we, we can't reduce the number of vehicles at this time. The second is whether we look at the grants that we give to, to statutory bodies and state-owned enterprises. Mm. They could be cut off. They need to stand on their own feet and make their adjustments themselves. We need to close embassies that are not doing anything for us. And we around the world? Around the world. And I'm not sure why we, we, we even opened them in the first place. So there, there are a few others. Hmm? That you'd like to, that yeah. you can... Um, it's in the list that I have. In the list provide. that uh, you said. Now, how much, do you how much do you think can be saved by those government expenditures? Conservatively, half a billion. Half a, 500 million? Yes. Can be saved? Yes. Were you surprised that government did not institute uh, civil servants' pay cuts in the initial action that they took uh, as part of savings? I think so. I think like many people, we would have expected everybody to share the burden of this crisis. And uh, we pay our taxes, and they are the ones that are paid to civil servants. I, I think they need to take up. I suggested in my earlier list that uh, government look at reducing the salaries of the top civil servants and the top executives in corporations that are owned by government. So that's a start. So, you, yeah. so 500 million, I mean, there's no way to verify things, but you, you, you've been a Reserve Bank governor, and you feel that the government can cut that uh, you know, operating expenditure for uh, the government is around a billion? Uh, more than that, uh, yeah. So almost cutting a third off. Yeah, I, I think operating expense is about two billion. Two billion. Yeah. So, so big cuts. It's a huge cut. But yeah. we need to do something like that. So uh, coming back to the proposed one billion cash injection, that and, and I say again, that's a big number. And you said just to print it. Half of it. Half of it. <laughs> that's quite a lot of money to print. Yes. And to put into the economy. Yes. Uh, yeah. What are, the, what are the possible downside of that? Well, when you print money, one of the side effects is higher inflation. inflation. I think we can live a bit with higher inflation at this time. The other is that it increases exports, uh, imports, I'm sorry, and that impacts on your foreign reserves. Mm. We, we can manage foreign reserves. At this time, it's quite healthy as imports are going down, but we can manage that effect on foreign reserves. So to me it's manageable, the cost, but manageable. And this money that you're saying to print, you're essentially stating to give it to the people. Absolutely. It's give uh, the money almost to like the a people. Father Christmas uh, Absolutely. scenario yeah. at, at this stage. You know, what impact yeah. will that have? It will give the spending power that we have lost. As I said, uh, 2.5 billion that has been taken away from the economy. Uh, it just gives part of that back mm. to, to families, to those that are affected uh, by the crisis, and to small and medium businesses. How long can that one billion circulate before it, people saying, oh, we need more money? Because yes. we never know how long this will be. Yes. Uh, I'm saying we don't give it in lump sum. We give it in a monthly allotments. Uh, and that might spread its impact 
about a bit longer than, say, uh, withdrawal from FNPF. It's lump sum. It's probably right. gone in a month. Because some would say, uh, uh, one would say the more responsible thing is get people to use money they have in FNPF rather than throwing them money that government does not have. Hmm. Uh, there's an argument against that, that uh, in a crisis like this, I think people should look at government to give them a hands up rather than ask them to go and raid their retirement fund. I mean, if you look around the world, I haven't seen any government suggest that to its employees. Mm. To its, no. Because that is for a different reason. So government should stand up and give some assistance. Take responsibility. Take responsibility. Okay. We'll leave that there. We'll continue the discussion after the break. You're watching Simpson today. We'll be right back. This program is brought to you by Colgate. Brush twice a day for strong, healthy teeth. I wash my hands after I use the toilet. I wash my hands after I touch the animal. I also wash my hands after I cough. I wash my hands before every meal. I wash my hands after I sneeze. Hand washing reduces the spread of germs and diseases. Wash your hands before you eat or touch food. Together, let's make hand washing a habit. This program is brought to you by Colgate. Brush twice a day for strong, healthy teeth. Welcome back. You're watching Simpson at 8 uh, with Unity Fiji Party Leader Savanada Narumbe. Interesting discussions, some interesting solutions. Uh, I know a lot of people have things to say about that. Uh, but uh, you have talked about the one billion immediate uh, cash injection into the system, and and you you say this is part of a roadmap. Uh, let, so let's let's go through the roadmap. So you're saying this immediate injection is the first step in the roadmap. Right. Right. What, what hap So the roadmap. Then sorry, the one billion uh, r gives back the purchasing power the funds that people can use, mm -hmm. uh, what is that designed to do to the economy, just to, to push the economy to make it flowing again? Yeah, it pe it's money in people's hands. What do they do with the money? It's of course some of them will save some, some of them will go out and spend. So that money churns the economy and, and gives that to those that are producing the goods and services uh, that are suffering right now. It's, it's, it's like a demand management. You give okay. money and they go out and demand. So you're saying that's really not to sustain lives, save businesses. Yes. Uh, at that first space, if you, if you were to run this, mm. run the game mm. right now. So uh, what would go next? Yeah, then uh, that will give us time to put in more actions that might need some consideration uh, to, uh, of time. And I'm saying that would be some breathing space. Yeah, for government to really dig deep into the expenses, because uh, taxes are not coming in, uh, and that will be one of the issues I hope to see in this budget that's coming up next month. Uh, and then uh, from then on, I think we need to take the opportunity now to put in train mm. uh, changes in government policies. Right. Changes that have brought us the problems that we have faced in the past. And that's the, uh, the policy, the physical, as well as economic policy. We need to change that. Give an we example. need to learn from that. And then for, for fiscal policy, we cannot uh, continue to spend our way through. We need to watch our debt. We, we need to be prudent. So that's the kind of fiscal strategy we need to start adopting after this. So you think, uh, don't think our debt at the moment is at a manageable level at 45? It's 45 at 60 and, 45 and growing. Government is saying it's at 45 to 50 percent. Uh, it will be 65 soon percent of GDP and it will be continued to grow as government borrows for these things. So we'll be reaching over 70 percent of GDP in debt. That's unsustainable. Unsustainable. Because we started at 50 percent of GDP. 
We need to stop the philosophy that government can continue to build an economy at the back of our tax, of our taxes. You cannot do that. So your one billion, because I know that the government is looking at some outside mm -hmm. funding, you know, even for the 455 million uh, for Fiji Airways, funded domestically and internationally mm -hmm. as well. To certain extent. Your one billion is not going to increase the debt, uh, you're saying, because it will come from the Reserve Bank printing money and the uh, cut in the expenditure, uh, the 500 million. Yeah, the Reserve Bank the money is debt. The Reserve Bank is lending to government. Okay. So that's 500 million will be uh, increasing. So debt. increasing the government debt? Yes. Uh, what would be the debt level you think is sustainable through this? Yeah, w with the other borrowing, the, the government is going to, to be facing a lot of borrowing in the next 12 months. What it needs to do is to prioritize its expenses, how it spends that money. And, and to, to think about, as I said, putting the physical uh, picture right and doing the right things on the physical front. We cannot be afford to be doing what we were doing before so the crisis. What about on the monetary front? Yeah, the monetary front uh, in a small uh, island economies should be supportive of what the fiscal thing is doing. If the fiscal excesses, then the monetary policy comes in on foreign reserves, trying to restrict the outflows of foreign reserves uh, and so forth. So the main driver of an economy in a, in a situation as us is government right. and the public sector. We've seen, uh, so I mean, that's basically a roadmap, that's the second phase you've just discussed. Yeah, the there the may be other things that should the, the, be in the, the second phase. Is there any other third phase? Or yeah. Basically, we need to change a lot of things. We need to broaden the economic base. We cannot be putting all our eggs in one basket, like tourism. It, it is a fragile industry, as we have seen there. We need to grow our resource-based industry. That's where our strengths are. But unfortunately, we haven't been doing that. And that's why, also, the, at this time, our problems are worse than what they would have been. Because of heavy reliance on tourism. Yes, absolutely. So we have to diversify? Diversify, diversify into diversify agriculture, into forestry, into fisheries, into other things that we Where have. Where we have resources. resources. We haven't been doing that, unfortunately. Uh, okay, so um, companies like Fiji Airways and the tourism industry, I mm. mean, uh, we can talk about diversifying and moving the base, but right now, that's what holding half our economy more or less yes. together. Yes. Uh, what would you see? I mean, we're talking about these bubbles and these um, arrangements mm. that are in place. How would you? S how do you see the tourism industry getting back on its feet with? Um, yeah, I've with heard, the situation. I've heard some uh, projections. I think they are too optimistic. I mean, it's not just a matter of joining a bubble. It's not just a matter of resuming international flights. It depends on the choices of tourists deciding to hop to us. And I think that will take a long time. Confidence needs to return. And I think even though the flights may be there, the planes are flying, but they're empty. Okay, yeah. So you're looking, this is going to be a long, long haul? I think haul. it's going to be a long haul for the tourism. For the tourism industry. But we can do other things while, while the tourism recovers. And that's what I'm suggesting. So the domestic, more yes. domestic focused economy. Yeah. So how quickly, um, I mean, you've, you've, you've answered that the question mm. I was going to come to us. Okay. To go back to pre-COVID-19, or at least yeah. something equal to. When it's going to take three years. Three years. To get back to where we were. And then from then on, try to grow. Some would say that's pretty pessimistic. It, it is. It is perhaps pessimistic. But you see, there are a lot of uh, balls in the air right now. Even the experts don't know the answers to many of these questions. How can we predict for us? We will need to say, okay, what position should I take? An optimistic one or a pessimistic one? For me, I uh, would rather be on the pessimistic side. Pessimistic side. <laughs> and, uh, and be, uh, be more prepared for, the, yes. for, a, for a long If you make a mistake, that's fine. A long bit of struggle. But if you're optimistic and make a mistake, you are indeed problems. All right. So a combination of both, some would say, perhaps, probably, would perhaps probably be, a balance would be good. Somewhere. I'd like to, before we go, we close the show, uh, come to politics, because mm. you are the leader of a political party, and 
the last we spoke was before the election. Correct. You were quite confident of winning some seats. Yes. It didn't turn out that way. Uh, no. It didn't turn out that way. Uh, figures I see altogether 6,000 votes in total. Just or above. Just above. And uh, about the 1.5% of mm. the people vote for you. What happened there? Did you miscalculate the, what was happening in the country? Yeah, we didn't have much time. I think we had about 10 months to prepare. It was really optimistic. But uh, it's politics. And many things just happen that uh, will sway the voters. And we have learned our lessons from that. That, uh, you know, we need to be smarter, we need to be early, and we need to get some of these things done quite well in advance. So we'll be better prepared for 2022, We're 2022. definitely going to be well prepared for 2022. We all know the situation that has uh, come through with uh, Sodelpa, the suspension. Yes. Uh, how are you viewing the situation that's taking place there? Well, I'm sorry. I think we're all sorry to hear what has happened. Uh, the suspension of Sodelpa. Uh, they have problems. They have considered those problems. I wish them well in solving them. We need a strong opposition, and they are the strong, the, the greatest or the number in the in parliament. So we need. Do you see someone. spaces up, uh, opening up for you, given the split, to position yourself in there as an alternative to We, we to at Unity place? Fiji, we have a plan uh, that has been there well before this happened. So we'll continue to uh, implement that, uh, those plans. Yeah. Do you see an opportunity to reach across and try and, and, and unite under a, a one opposition party banner for the 2022 elections? We should learn from what the last two elections has been. And I just came uh, through one. That was my first. And I believe, certainly believe, that we, we need to unite as one opposition party. It becomes a two-party race in the next election. All right. Unity, Unity Fiji Party leader, Savannah Narumbe, thank you for joining me on the show. Well, thank you. Punaka. That was Simpson at 8 for the evening. Will join me again next Thursday at the same time. This show will be replayed on Sunday. From now, good night. This program was brought to you by Colgate. Brush twice a day for strong, healthy teeth. Has something ever happened to you that made you feel scared or alone, but you didn't know what to do? Talking to someone is the best place to start. It could be a teacher, family member, or a neighbor. It could also be the Child Helpline. All you need to do is dial 1325 and you can talk to someone who can help. With the Child Helpline, we're here for you. No matter what you're going through, anytime, day or night, call 1325. That's 1325.